let me introduce you to Redcoat's Return, a long-lived being possibly many centuries old, camouflaged among us in the country of Switzerland. Masquerading as a retired scientist, he amuses himself with collecting artifacts like pipes and tabacchiana, and the production of social media videos. He is also a novice time traveler. Emboldened by his new black hole energy source, Mr. Redcoat plans a trip back to 1923, and unknown to him, is about to enter the twilight zone. Was known as the TARDIS and preparing for a trip, which is why I'm dressed up like this. Playing some uh, Rudy Shurika, it's on my playlist if you want to listen to it. Get me into the mood of the, uh, of the mid 1920s, which is where I'm going. Berlin, actually. Smoking my uh, King's favourite with the blue stem and uh, some Brookfield, which is the House of Poschel, a German blender, of course, a very old one. Brookfield, lovely uh, chocolatey tobacco. Brookfield number two, actually, the aromatic. Well, I mentioned last time that uh, I had big problems with my cold fusion power cells and they burned out when I returned on my last trip and realized they're only good for maybe two or three trips and uh, unreliable and that would be not good if you're in the middle of a temporal wormhole. So I thought I must have a much more powerful alternative. And as you know, some time ago I took a visit to CERN in Geneva. To look how they're getting on with the particle accelerator there. It's just actually taken in into service and uh, they were looking for the Higgs boson which is the particle which actually has the property of gravitational force and they think they found it there were some concerns at the time that they might create a singularity which is a black hole um, Everyone breathed a sigh of relief when they didn't because uh, the whole earth didn't collapse in a you know, hole in Geneva and uh, get swallowed up by a singularity. They thought. Well, as I was there and as I knew they were afraid of it and as I don't think they would put it to good use, I borrowed it. Well, I'll give it back, you know, later on when they're ready, able to handle it. But right now I can really use this. I put it in a, uh, a special field to capture it in the center. You see how furious it is to be captured. It's expressing its anger. Well, uh, it's a wonderful thing to have because this gives me all the energy of a, an, a temporal portal, of course, in a spinning back hole. Uh, that's what everyone says you, you need to uh, enter the corridors of the wormholes, the temporal wormholes, which I've been mapping out, you know, temporal cartography, it's a new discipline. So with this, a thousand journeys are possible, at least, maybe indefinitely. 
practically any distance in time before I was limited in how many years I could go back. So I'm looking forward to this first test run. It's going to be great fun. By the way, if you ever come across one of these things, be careful if you touch it. Um, it's very exhilarating in the morning, I must say. I uh, felt like a new man, regenerated. But uh, I wouldn't advise it for everyone. Well, have a look. exhilarating oh, I really enjoyed that but uh, can't do it too often you know well a few things to prepare and I'll let you know I'm very excited about some of the people I plan to meet nothing political just entertainers you know Did you know Marlena Dietrich was in 1923, 22 years old? Just started her career actually, made one or two films in German. It's going to be interesting. Planning the settings and course and we'll be off. See you later, and above all, what I come back with. Cheers. Well, here's what I mean about those two theories of time travel. So, the Novikov self-consistency theory says you can't travel back on your same timeline because you will cause a paradox and uh, you could kill your grandfather then you should not be there at all and that kind of thing so that leaves you with the theory where you have an infinite number an infinite number of parallel timelines basically parallel universes which can be practically identical to the one you're in just one single change is enough to put it in not the same universe infinite number of variations and if you then travel back through a wormhole created by your spinning black hole device of course you may end up in the past and you may change whatever you want because you're in a timeline where always that had occurred and whatever you change there's one of these parallel universes which had that change foreseen so that's a kind of neat solution to the theory but I don't think that's quite correct now Hawking 
said there's a chronology protection conjecture which might mean that you can travel on the one timeline and that are no parallel universes at all but you will be hindered from changing anything now I think that's partly true because in 1934 I had the distinct feeling as you know from that video that father time was watching what I was doing and certain trivial things I got away with but he didn't like it. So my theory is there is only one timeline and you can travel back along it but you may not change anything significant. Whatever you do the timeline will find a way to stop you doing it. So we'll see in this journey which of these theories is really correct. Based on my first trip I think this one and that uh, Hawking was partly right. I always think that we consider too many things based on Einstein's general relativity and too few in terms of quantum mechanical possibilities and in the world of quantum mechanics what appears to be impossible happens and that is why I favor this model but we shall see won't we <laughs> well hello again just thought while I'm in between of my trip and preparations I tell you a little bit more about this beautiful half side tobacco I put it on my favorite list this is my second tin of this beautiful tobacco of course it's um, the winter time reserve so supplies might not last too long but just smoking my Bing's favorite pipe this is what it looks like it's a, a flake which is nicely sliced in the tin and it's beautifully packed here but you, as soon as you take it out it sort of breaks breaks apart very very easily which I like actually I mean it's less bother but it retains the character of, of a good flake of course it's got that lovely Latakia Virginia mix but some delicate sweetness on top uh, vanilla and dark chocolate and the dark chocolate is really dark chocolate in other words it's not it's only a slight sweetness and I think some of that is from the Virginia it's beautiful looking flake a little bit of dark in there as well with age well as I've said in the other time travel videos you have to prepare you know so I think accoutrement wise I'll be alright take my beautiful old 1910 shellac lighter this is so reliable and uh, even if when it's windy lights very reliably now the further back you go the more difficult it is to have some currency with you and um, I've got my little ramshackle collection and uh, 20,000 Reichsmarks now of course that was the beginning of the hyperinflation I think early in 1923 it wasn't at its worst but uh, we shall see but I think this will get me a lunch or something I'm only going to stay there for a short while and try to uh, catch one of those concerts where Marlene is performing right well 
I'm just going to leave everything here because uh, a few preparations I'm gone but I'm back a minute later so I can resume my smoke when I'm uh, when I'm back and I'll tell you what happened <laughs> cheers everyone then see you soon Well, I'm back. Hey, what a time that was. You wouldn't believe the stories I've got to tell. Sylvia? Well, I got some more rights marks here. Uh, inflation had uh, gone a bit further than I thought. 50 million. It's incredible. All 1923, 50 million. That gets you uh, a lunch. Lucky I had some gold coins with me. Here we are. Five. Milliard and five billion marks. Not even printed on the back side, it's not worth the ink. 1923, fascinating time. Got Marlene's autograph, God bless her. I was smoking half side, wasn't I? What is that doing here? And I had a blue pillow here. Sylvia? Did you uh, change anything out here? What happened to our blue uh, covers? Say, what do you mean? We all never had white cushions. And who is Sylvia anyway? The workings of the universe will challenge man's ingenuity for time eternal. Mr. Redcoat ventured to explore its temporal corridors and ended up just getting lost in the Twilight Zone.